Hey, what's up, YouTube? It's Kay right here. I'm, I'm back with another good video for today. Um, I wanted to uh, make this video to um, basically criticize uh, Sandy Ryan's recent victory of a woman that wasn't really that known. And I don't blame her, but at the same time, like, it's not worth a fight that you should be taking, especially starting out in your career because you're coming in late into the game. But Sandy Ryan, five foot nine and a half. Man, she's like, she's not that tall, but yeah. But I'm like taller than her, which is quite surprising that she's five foot nine. Like I was thinking she was like at least five seven, but no, she's five foot nine and a half. She out of that United Kingdom, out of Derby, Derbyshire, UK, Orthodox fighter. Uh, she got her first stoppage victory over Alexandra Vujovic. Um, I don't like this fight. I did not appreciate this fight. Um, I thought this is a horrible fight to take. Knowing that there's not that many females in the super lightweight division, but for a woman like her, she should be fighting against top level competition. And I think, honestly, it would have been better if she took a Katie Phelan fight Somebody in the top 25, I wouldn't, I wouldn't try to go any lower, which I mean, don't get it twisted, like, well, I mean, this is box rec that we're talking about here, but a fight like this against a European, you know, journeyman, I would say, I would say more like she's just a gatekeeper, Alexandra, I'm sorry to say that, but that's just how it is when people are not that good, and, you know, you're kind of just there to be used as a punching bag. I don't think that was a good fight. I think, honestly, it should have been someone a little bit higher in caliber. I wouldn't mind any of these fighters like Miranda Reyes. Like, some of these young girls that, that are just as athletically gifted or somebody that could take shots and, you know, go toe-to-toe -to -toe with somebody. I think that definitely would at least show some credibility in the record um, upgrade. Like, you know, uh, uh, um, I would say, like, the resume improvement if you will, because, I mean, 140 isn't a big division for females, so, you know, all the ladies are pretty just, you know, on their way out, so, I mean, honestly, at the end of the day, it's it's really nothing to really think, think so much about, because nobody doesn't care about female boxing that much, and it's not too much of a division that people really think about, so... I mean, for this particular division, it's kind of sad because there's really not that many good names that we could see Sandy fight. But I would definitely say, like, if I'm going to give out a good possible five opponents in the in the near future, I wouldn't mind Kimberly Gonzalez. Um, actually, no. Well, actually, no. Yeah, this is a good fight. I actually wouldn't mind this fight. Kim Kimberly Gonzalez. You know, they're they're both prospects on the rise, so. Go after this person, or go after maybe maybe Diana Starkova, Destiny Jones. She's a good fighter too. I've I, I've seen her fight. She's really good. Um, who's that other girl? She also fights at one forty. Um, maybe I don't know. I'd probably go with maybe Paulette Perez. Go after some of these Mexican fighters. Katie Katie Phelan would be a good fight too. Um, maybe somewhere down the line, if you could get a Candy Wyatt, because I mean, she, she's obviously 28 years old. So it's like, at this point, you need to start taking tougher fights down the road. And I don't think this second fight really displays anything better. It only just displays that she, she just took a fight against a Euro bomb that should have been not even in the ring with her in the first place. So I think to make it a little bit easier and quicker, it would be a lot better if uh, that person would have been somebody that we already knew in the division. Because, you know, if she's going to continue to fight women that we know that she's going to dominate, then she's going to end up like a Josh, you know, uh, sh uh, Josh Kelly in a way. Because uh, that's how I see it with some of these, like, females that fight under DAZN. Like, you know, especially let the European driven females that don't really go out and fight as often. Like those women make me, you know, look at them like a certain way to be like, well, 
you know, uh, the old saying goes, especially according to Ricky Williams, shout out to Ricky Williams, but he says, watch him like, you know, watch how men move a certain way. And you have to study how they move in the game of boxing, because if you don't do that, then you're not going to understand how that fighter grows as an individual. Because when men do move a certain way, you know, vice versa with females, it shows their character within the game. So I think it makes perfect sense why she took this fight, because she, cause she knew that, okay, this is a, you know, quick little easy victory that I could get, and then I could make my way back up to wherever I want to be in. But it's like, does that really make you even better? No, I don't, you know, I don't think so. You know, I think, honestly, it, it, it would have been a lot better to see her fight up against some of these younger females that are just as good, if not maybe close to her level. Who knows, you know, like that, like, you know, that's how, you know, divisions get better. You know, you just can't fight women that you think that you can beat and then you just go on and keep doing that. No, I don't like, you know, I don't like, I don't see that to be a good improvement for a fighter and that needs to stop because when you fight people with losing records and you keep doing that over and over, then you're going to feel more comfortable once you step it up and then boom. You know, somebody, somebody's going to catch you one day at the wrong place at the wrong time in one of your fights, and then they're going to come out of their way and knock you out. So I think um, it makes all the sense in the world of why she took that fight, and it shouldn't have been a fight to have been made. I, th I think, honestly, that, that just wasn't a smart thing to do, because especially, like, with a lot of these, like, Western, Eastern European female fighters, they... They don't like to test that other side of what the pond when it comes over to American style fighters or fighters, especially coming from Mexico too, which I kind of feel like that's a little bit of their kryptonite that they face because they don't face everybody out of, you know, like the whole, um, how should I say, out of like the whole stable, you know what I'm saying? Like they don't, they don't test, test other sides of, of like, you know, um, of, uh, of the pond, if you will. And uh, I think I think that needs to be stopped because, you know, the problem is just simply that if you're going to go out of your way and continue to fight bums, then how does that make you better? You know, like like, you know, if you're going to become a world champion, you need to face all the best competition that's around you. You can't just be growing from lower level competition because that's how you have what the Canelo Alvarez's of the world and the Terrence Crawford's of the world. So. Either way, I don't I don't really shade a little bit hatred on Sandy. It's just simply of the fact that Sandy doesn't really have too much to really give and it's it's not something for me to just say, "Oh, well, I'm just hating on her." I'm not hating on nobody. I'm just being honest of the fact that there's not enough talent that can't be avoided and it, it needs to be stopped in a sense where you need to have more names on your resume as you keep um, improving that, you know, that resume. And I think eventually in the future, like that, that's going to have to be fixed up because when when boxing does correct itself, hopefully one day in the future, there needs to be better level fights. You know, I don't I don't want to see a fucking fight between you know, this girl versus that girl, and then this girl's 10-0, and 0, but the other girl is like 2-0, and 0, but she doesn't have too many fights on her resume, it doesn't, you know, it, like, you know, it doesn't really help anybody out, but either way, um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind seeing, you know, uh, Sandy face some of these girls in the future, I wouldn't mind a Britney Cruz fight, that, that would be a good step up, she, she's not the best fighter in the world, she got stopped by, um, Jessica Rakowski in the past. Um, Rebecca Laws is a good fight. No, no, no. Uh, not Rebecca Laws. I'm sorry. Um, uh, her name is, uh, yeah, what is it? Um, this one? Yeah. Her name is, yeah, Destiny Jones. I wouldn't mind that fight. That that would be a good fight. Ida Biggs um, would be a good fight. Miranda Reyes, good fight. I would like to see that. Uh, I think that would be a very competitive fight. Either way, 
I um I wouldn't I wouldn't mind seeing anybody within like the top twenty. If she if she could do that, there's nothing that I could really be mad about. As long as you're doing your job and you're calling out all the big names, okay, fine. But at 140 though, you're not facing anybody at the top level yet. So with you coming into the sport very late. There needs to be a lot of stepping up to do now. Because if you came into boxing early at a younger age and you didn't do all this amateur fighting, because uh, that's a big problem that I have against females or males that come into boxing late into the sport, where they have all this amateur experience and then they tote about, oh, I'm such a good fighter, blah, 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 because I have all this amateur experience. But once you get up inside that ring, and then once you get tested and see where you are when it comes to getting hit in the face, then that's when you're going to be like, oh, wow, I'm really not that good. And I don't feel like the same fighter as I as I was um, in the amateurs. Because that's the problem in the amateurs. You feel so comfortable fighting three, like, you know, three rounds, two minutes, or, you know, um, however many minutes that it is. Because the amateurs is set for you to be fighting at a lower tier level of boxing. Not in the pros where you're fighting three minutes. Um, yeah, yeah, three minute, you know, like uh, uh, um, whatever rounds that people fight for. Um, you know, usually four, eight, six, or 12, or 10, or 10 round fights. Um those type of fights are more endurance driven fights versus in the amateurs those are scoring driven fights where you have to fight to to earn points with the amount of punches that you land but in the pros way different because it's all about endurance in the pros of how much you can take punishment in the professional fights and you manage to win the fight by hitting your opponent as much as you can and not getting hit in the process because that's what boxing is hit and not get hit so when you like you know when you master those fundamentals and you get better by facing tougher razor sharp competition that is what's going to make you into a world champion but in regards to sandy um i don't really appreciate this fight uh it it definitely needs to be some of these ladies that are listed right here on box track. I know Kirstie, she she's a decent opponent. That wasn't really a fight that I really appreciated watching cuz Kirstie she she didn't really look like the same fighter like she was in her last fight cuz in her last fight she did pretty good. And I thought Kirstie she was going to give Sandy a little bit of problems, which she did, but Kirstie she she was like fighting very awkward. She she was fighting in a sense where she was trying to knock out Sandy. She was head hunting too much and I think like Sandy's biggest weakness is to the body. Like, if you, like, you know, if you see, like, you know, seen her shell up in the inside, it, it just shows, like, she's better at coming forward, but when you put, like, you know, when you force her to the ropes and you apply pressure and you force her to her back foot where she can't really use, like, these, you know, high swinging motions with her hooks and her jabs, she can easily get stopped because the problem with Sandy is that she doesn't like pressure. And I want to say she she kind of reminds me like another version of Josh Kelly because Josh Kelly, he's the same way where a lot of these European fighters, when they get pushed back by somebody that's not afraid to go toe to toe, but to give you pressure and to make you break in a fight, that's it. You just can't fight because there's a difference between boxing and fighting. When you come to fight, you make it a dog fight. When you come to box, then it's a boxing match. It's a chess match of who hits more, like who hits more decisively and precisely to win the fight based on the fundamentals of who punches and lands shots more effectively. And whether that may come by a flash knockdown or whatever, it really depends. But do I see Sandy, you know, being, you know, being, you know, what? Uh, the best fighter out there, you know, is she the goods for 140? I'm not too sure, honestly. I don't, I don't really think too highly of European fighters, just mainly because that they don't test all the sides of competition or all the, you know, like you know, all the best competition out there. So 
you know, she, she definitely has a lot of proven grounds to show to me. So I'll definitely keep my eye on her. Not really too much of a fight, you know, that, or like, basically she's not that much of a fighter that makes me feel like amazed. You know, I've seen fighters like her be on the come up and then once they step it up somewhere down the line, then they get possibly stopped or they don't look like the same fighter as they once was. So <laughs> especially if you're coming into the sport late, I'm not, you know, I'm not going to really be looking at you like that. So I think, I think it's best that she steps up her competition now. So that way she can earn my respect later because that's what people like me are going to say about her. We're going to be asking you the same question like Sandy why are you fighting this girl instead of that girl? If you fight undefeated fighters more and you actually do stop them and you do actually, sh you know, show how good your power is and how good your potential is, you know, in boxing, then good. Go for it because that's what women's boxing needs. Because until she does that, then she'll earn my respect. But do I think she got power? Eh, not really. She she's more of a volume puncher. She she doesn't really like from fr like you know from her first pro debut fight, she didn't look that good and she didn't look that bad. So I would say she's average because she's just getting started, but in her second fight, it clearly showed that her opponent was tailor made for her. So she she obviously took that fight to make herself look good, but does she do that against somebody that is just as good as her, where she could do the same thing? I would say no, because you haven't really fought somebody of, you know, of a high caliber that is just as young as you, just as hungry as you, that can give you problems. And I think that's what's going to determine her skill set in the 140-pound division moving up to 147. Cause I think at 147, she can she could definitely easily you know easily win some belts, but I mean, all these like you know crappy fake you know semi titles or these fake you know like you know these fake belts in boxing need to go like the EBU super welterweight whatever NABO title get that shit out of there that that shit needs to be banned from boxing it should only be the four major sanctioning bodies if we're gonna be fair you know there like you know there should only be one face one name in boxing out of every major belt but if we're not going to have these belts and we're going to have competitive fight leagues where everybody has to fight each other just like the ufc or the nba where somebody is going to meet somebody at the very end of that tunnel then guess what it needs to be set up like that but until then i think it should just be one belt per organization per sanctioning body organization, get rid of these sanctioning fees and order these fights immediately. Have a 100 plus ranking system per, per sanctioning body. And then once you get up there and you climb up through the rankings, then boom, you like, you know, um, you've already made yourself known in boxing by having the best face the best consistently. Not every so often where this sanctioned body orders this fight, but then it comes to find out that this is a cherry pick for this fighter because the promoters are, you know, have their pockets within that sanctioned body, like the WBA or the WBC. No, get that shit out of there. I don't want to see that. I like, you know, I want to see the best fight the best every single day. That means women like Sandy need to be tested against women that want to knock her head off and make her feel a little bit uncomfortable in those fights that are tough because that is what breeds world champions. That's what creates high-level fighters. So that's pretty much what I have to say about Sandy Ryan. I wanted to get that off my chest. Uh, she's not the type of fighter that I think she is now, but we'll see what happens later. Um, she She gives me a lot of Josh Kelly vibes, so... I don't, I don't really think so highly of her now, but if Josh Kelly can bounce back in his career, then I'm pretty sure Sandy, she will do that if she ever loses in, in the future. But from the looks of it, it doesn't seem like she's really testing herself enough, so I would have to put my thoughts on standby about her. But that's pretty much what I have to say. Thank you guys for watching. This is Keanu Rodriguez signing out.
and I will see you guys later. Goodbye.